والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Islam now is taking a leap step to the future after 13 years of being oppressed tortured and sometimes killed, the followers of the Prophet ﷺ finally got the chance to travel to a new state, to a new city, to a new place where they could worship Allah freely and with the support of the brothers from that country. The Prophet ﷺ through the last three years in Mecca met men on the seasons of pilgrimage on the markets of the Arabs presented his case recited the Quran some of them accepted Islam some of them rejected it but no one gave him the support and protection he needed two years before his migration to Medina he met six men from the tribe of Khazraj from Yathrib, from Medina, who were convinced of what he said and embraced Islam on the spot. He sent with them Mus'ab ibn Umayr, may Allah be pleased with him, who, le- who went to Medina and started to call the people of Medina, and he succeeded in his mission. The following year, on the 13th year, after the first revelation was given to the Prophet ﷺ, 73 men and two women came and gave the second pledge of allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ, inviting him to come and migrate to Medina. Now, it was a turning point. Soon afterwards, the Prophet ﷺ decided that his companions should migrate to Medina. And they went one by one. Among the very first to go, Abu Salama ibn uh, Abdul Asad, one of the great companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and his brother, who was breastfed with the Prophet ﷺ by the maid of Abu Lahab, Thuwayba. Also, Mus'ab ibn Umair, who went there before everyone else to prepare and, and, and pave the way, Ibn Umm Maktoum, the blind man who the Prophet ﷺ was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he should not have turned his face from this blind man trying to call the dignitaries of Quraysh. And instead, he should have answered and attended the question of this blind man because he was a, a, a true believer of Allah. Umar ibn Khattab and so many others tried and went to migrate to Medina and succeeded. But many have failed. Many have failed because the pagans would prevent them either by not allowing them to take their money. In one case, Suhaib al-Rumi, who was a slave, and then was bought off and set free. Suhaib al-Rumi, may Allah be pleased with him, wanted to migrate to Medina. So he left. The pagans did not leave him alone. They followed him 
until when he was in the middle of the way, he told, they told him that you cannot migrate. He told them, why can't I migrate? I am going to worship Allah freely and I'm fleeing your country. So what else do you want from me? They told him, we have to prevent you because you came to us as a beggar, a poor man. You did not have anything. And over the years, you managed to raise a fortune because he was a craftsman. He used to make uh, uh, swords and so on, a blacksmith or something of that kind. So he told them, after spreading all of his arrows that he had with, his, with him in his sack, O pagans of Mecca, you know that I am among the greatest of you in archery. If I shoot one of my arrows, I usually hit a bullseye. And by Allah, you come closer to me and I will shoot you with all the arrows that I have and then fight you with my sword until I die. But if you want to save me and yourself the trouble, I will tell you where I hid my money. You can go there and you can claim and take it. And I have no regret on that. Imagine when a slave, when a poor man, when a stranger works for so many years and after saving this much amount of money, someone comes and takes it Unreasonable matter. and you are from scratch to begin again. And what is the reason behind that? Just because you simply came to us out of arrogance. You came to us poor and now you want... You want to go rich? No, this is not possible. I think uh, in these days, free is the money of the uh, Muslims in, in, in Sudan, in Palestine, in Iraq. This is again a, a, a political issue where the non-Muslims utilize their sources to harm the Muslims in any which way they can. For example, Hamas, they have frozen their accounts worldwide, but to their surprise, they did not have that much accounts because all of what they had was invested in Palestine to the Palestinian people. Also, what we hear nowadays, whenever someone is in the position of opposing the superpowers or the Europeans or so on, they use this method with him, they freeze his assets. And to tell you the truth, I think that the Muslims deserve what they get. Why do you invest? Why do you put your money in their banks? Yeah. As long as you don't have anything to fear. But usually the tyrants and those who embezzle and those who steal from the treasuries of their countries take these money and hide it in mm. Swiss banks so that one day if they had to flee and go away and run from their crimes, they would have a place safe for them to stay. So Haybar Rumi showed them where his money was. And they left him and he went to Medina. The minute he reached Medina, the Prophet ﷺ, because he traveled and migrated after the Prophet ﷺ, so, the Prophet told him, you have succeeded in your trade Aba Suhaib, Aba, Aba Yahya. He, Suhaib, whose name was Aba Yahya. He told him that it was indeed a successful transaction because you gave them this worldly money, but you've gained your freedom and you made your migration, which meant that the price he paid was everything that he ever owned in his life. This is a successful tra trade with Allah. Of course, he was trading with Allah yeah. because he migrated and left everything. So the first thing they tried is to block the money and prevent them from taking their money, the pagans. The second thing was trying to stop them from taking their wives and children. And this exactly what happened with Umm Salama and Abu Salama. May Allah be pleased with them both. Umm Salama bint uh, uh, Abi Umayyah wanted to migrate with her 
husband. When the husband went, she wanted to go. She was faced with the family of her husband and her own family, al Mughira. And each one of them prevented her from going. For her family, the tribe of al Mughira, they said, we cannot allow you to go and follow your husband. You stay with us. And she had a small child with her. The family of the, of the husband, the family of Abi Salama, said that, well, if she cannot go, then the boy stays with us because the boy has to go with his father and we will not keep him with you and your tribe. And they started pulling the boy until the boy's arm was dislocated. He was a child and they took the child away from her, her husband's family. And she spent months, every single day, she goes to the border of Mecca from uh, morning time until the evening, crying until sunset and goes going back because she was deprived of her husband. She cannot follow him. And she was deprived of her child until she was met by uh, uh, Uthman, uh, Uthman ibn Talha, a shabi who saw her once and uh, uh, she or the family, her family felt sorry for her before that. And they said, well, okay, after seeing the situation you have reached, seeing your crying and tear and, 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 and weeping, they felt soft for her. They told her, you may leave and follow your husband. And when the family of her husband saw this, they gave her back her child and told her, Okay, then if you are allowed to, to go and, and, and follow your husband, then you may take your, your son. So she took a camel and she rode on the camel with her son and went outside of Mecca. She did not know the, the road and she was on her own, a female with a child traveling at, at, at uh, this distance. It could have taken them two or three days. That was too much. So one of the dignitaries and noble people of Mecca saw her and he was Uthman ibn Talha, a shaybi, one of the people that the Prophet ﷺ gave the key of the Kaaba to. So he told her, where are you going, O daughter of Abi Umayyah? She told him, I'm going to follow my husband in Medina. He, he looked at her and said, on your own? This is something that cannot be accepted. And he guided her to Medina. She is telling us, by Allah, I have never seen a companion more honorable than him. He never talked to me and he never, look, never looked at me. And whenever we wanted to rest, he would do something with the camel so that it would go on its down and sit on its four feet. And then he would retreat and give his back to me and ask me to dismount. And whenever I dismounted, he used to go and take the saddle of the camel, feed it, water it, take care of it, while I am away from him. Also, he, he was not Muslim. He was not a, a Muslim, but I'm going to continue, inshallah, just after the break. If you're 18 or if you're 80, if you've been Muslim for 50 years or five minutes, this is a show for you. You know, when five times a day I've, our foreheads touch the ground in prayer, we beg for what's most important in our lives. We want to be good people, better Muslims. We want to serve Allah Almighty with all our hearts. In this show, Let's Talk, every week we're going to talk about Islam and life, how to relate with other people and how to serve Allah. We'll have studio guests, we'll have a live studio audience, There'll be a, an email for you to write to, talk at huda.tv. So if you're looking for something different, looking for something that will make you think, maybe even touch your heart, this is the show for you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. 
exactly as you've mentioned, Uthman ibn Talha ibn Abi Talha was not a Muslim. Yet he was an Arab, which meant that he had the pride in him, that he had the jealousy in him, that he had the generosity and bravery to do whatever a gallant man would do. He took Umm Salama and her child to Medina. And just as he was at the outskirts of Medina, he told her, there is your husband's house. And he left her and went back to Mecca. Who would do such a brave and courageous thing uh, like this? By the way, Uthman ibn Talha ibn Abi Talha was or became a Muslim afterwards on the day of Fath, the conqueror of Mecca. And the Prophet ﷺ gave him the key to the Kaaba as it was in his the, uh, uh, ancestors to take care of the Kaaba. So the pagans tried to stop them by taking their money, by preventing them from having their children and wives, and by tricking them. This happened with Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, and uh, Ayyash ibn Rabi'ah. Umar ibn Khattab, Ayyash ibn Rabi'ah, and Hisham ibn al-As ibn Wa'il, they all agreed to go and migrate to Medina together, but they didn't want the pagans to know about it. So they had a rendezvous, and they said that we will meet on this area at this particular hour. And if any one of us does not show up, this means that he was prevented, and we will. the rest will go on their way. When Umar ibn Khattab went there, he only met Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. And they knew that uh, Hisham could not make it. And actually, Hisham ibn al-As ibn Wa'il was prevented from uh, accompanying them, and he was tortured afterwards, and so many things happened to him. They all migrated to Medina, and just as Ayyash reached Medina with Umar, came to him Abu Jahl and another one of his companions, telling him that your mother has sworn not to eat anything or drink until she, she, uh, she sees you. And Ayyash loved his mother a lot. Omar warned him, this is a trick. They're going to take you away and then they're going to torture you until you abandon the deen, the religion of Islam. He told him, no, no, it's not going to be like this. I trust them. And it's only that I will go and comfort my mother and tell her that everything is fine and come back. Omar kept on warning him. I know these people. You know them. They don't say the truth. They're going to betray you. He insisted. When Omar felt that there was no hope in convincing him, he told him, then I will give you my camel, which is the fastest camel around. If you felt anything fishy, just kick the camel and it will immediately get you back here. So Ayash went with them and in the middle of the way, Abu Jahl or one of the, the two men told him that your, your, your camel is, is very strong. Uh, my camel is getting tired. Can I uh, ride with you? So I told him, yes, sure. It's a strong camel. And the minute he got next to him, they tied him and they took him to Mecca with their trick. They did this with so many people, either preventing them by taking their belongings. The Prophet ﷺ himself was deprived of his property and whatever he had in Mecca. And that was clear when he came in the Fath of Mecca and they told him, do you want to go to your house of Prophet ﷺ? He told them, did Aqil, his cousin, leave us any property. The minute we migrated, he took everything to himself, which means that even the Prophet ﷺ was deprived of his property. So most of the companions were beginning to migrate to Medina. When the pagans saw this, they realized that now this is a really serious issue because Muhammad 
if he succeeds والسلام, in moving to Medina he would have a Muslim state and he would have a power able to threaten our interests and maybe expand more and more so they were determined to kill him they were determined to assassinate the Prophet the books of Sheerah tells us a lot of stories some are authentic and some are not one of the most famous stories that it was the Satan's advice to them because his family his tribe was a very noble one and a strong one so they felt that if they killed him what will happen the people his tribes will call for his blood which means that someone has to die for that so Satan gave them an idea and he told them that select one Make tough that. strong man from each tribe, tribe. tribe. Yeah. and you have a collection of 13 15 tribe. men and then let them all go and attack Muhammad and kill him with their swords so when his tribe wants to call and ask and demand for his blood they would find that his blood is has been had been scattered in the older <laughs> tribes they went there they gathered at his doorsteps Allah Azza wa Jal told him that they're after your blood so he asked his cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib to sleep in his place and cover himself pretending that it is him and he took a handful of dust and sand and he threw it over their heads and he walked right between them and they could not see him it's a miracle it's a miracle it's yeah. one of the miracles well, yeah. that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the prophet then went to the house of abu bakr aisha may allah be pleased with her said that the prophet used to visit abu bakr's house in the morning and just before nightfall but on that day he came in the middle of the day and this was before the attempt of assassination of course he told Abu Bakr when he saw him the Prophet came covering his face so that nobody would recognize him and the Prophet came into the house asked Abu Bakr to let out whoever was in the room so Abu Bakr said oh Prophet of Allah they are your family it's my wife and my children so you have nothing to fear so the Prophet ﷺ told him oh Abu Bakr Allah Azza wa Jal has given me the permission to migrate to Medina so the first thing that jumped to Abu Bakr's mind was the companionship O oh, Prophet of Allah can I come with you can I accompany you so the Prophet ﷺ approved him and agreed to him so he burst into tears out of joy because of this great honor Aisha may Allah please with her said I've never seen anyone cry out of joy except this time this was the first for me to see someone crying out of joy this is, uh, indicates a great love to the Prophet Muhammad indeed no one loved the Prophet وسلم, more than Abu Bakr and the Prophet وسلم, had never ever loved anyone from the companions more than Abu Bakr we are told Amr ibn al-As who was one of the enemy enemies of Islam once he reverted to Islam and accepted it he said there wasn't a time that I have had seen the Prophet without him smiling in my face this is the nature of a Prophet whenever he sees someone he smiles in his face but Amr ibn al-As thought that the Prophet وسلم, liked him and respected him more than the other companions though he was only six months or one year in Islam so he says I approached the Prophet وسلم, I told him O Prophet of Allah whom among the people that you love most so he said Aisha so Amr ibn al-As 
said, well, I missed this one. No, no, no. Let me rephrase. I mean from men. Who is the most man among all the companions, among all the people that you love most? So he said, her father. And that is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Only then Amr ibn al-As knew that it was not him, so he left this issue. Abu Bakr had enormous love for the Prophet ﷺ, as the Prophet ﷺ himself had great love and respect to Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr immediately said, O Prophet of Allah, I have two camels. Take one of them. It's a gift. The Prophet said, No way. I have to pay you for this. Because this is a form of worship. I am migrating to Allah and this has to be from my own pocket. And he accepted that. This was the preliminary stages for Hijrah. They had assured their uh, 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 right. They had assured and uh, uh, ensured that they had a guide because they had Abdullah ibn Arqat, who was not a Muslim at the time, but he was a knowledgeable person of the ways and the routes to Medina, and they needed a guide. And also, the Prophet ﷺ ensured that Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr would bring them the news of what's going on in uh, uh, Medina, and Amir ibn Fuhayra, who was a slave and servant of Abu Bakr, would take the shepherd, uh, the sheep, and every now and then at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, give them some milk of it, as if he was caring for his sheep, not as if he know, knew where they were. On that designated night, the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr left Mecca, headed to the cave called Ghar Thor, the cave of Thor. And they stayed there for three nights. The people of Mecca were on their heels. They were trying their best to locate them because they had a problem. If he succeeds in fleeing Mecca, this means the end of Quraysh yeah. and the, ends, the end of their it's idols. Cold. They knew that he will prevail. So they put a bounty on his head and everybody was looking. And to the extent that they once reached to that cave yeah. where the Prophet ﷺ was hiding with his companion Abu Bakr. But unfortunately, we have to stop here. And inshallah, when we meet next time, we will continue with the great story of the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ. And until then, fi amanillah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. <تصفيق>